The Business of Art, How Galleries Make Money. Art galleries make money in many ways. But is it a sustainable business model, considering they're not really selling art? A lot has changed in the way galleries used to generate income versus how they do it now. Back then, due to no internet, advertisements didn't have great reach, so they had to rely heavily on the locality to generate revenue. However, this has changed massively in the modern era since more people can easily access information of their choice. Take, for example, the Louvre. It has many streams of revenue, one of which is throwing a fundraiser like its famous 2008 fundraiser. The event held in the vaulted gallery de Rue of the Louvre brought in just under $3 million. Now, this is not a small amount by any stretch of the imagination. Inflation adjusted, it comes to almost $4 million. But what about the governments? Do they play a part? Governments are also responsible for funding museums like the Louvre in France, the Uffizi Gallery in Italy, and the National Gallery in the UK, among many more. This didn't happen in the past, when the safekeeping of these galleries was the responsibility of the gallery's own administration. In the USA, things are a little different from Europe. Most museums are free for the public to visit. They function as non-profit organizations, and for some reason, the museums always seem to bounce back from any financial pit. Think about it. All the famous museums and art galleries in the U.S., like the Metropolitan Museum of Art, the National Gallery of Art, and others, even though publicly accessible, are thriving. So, are they involved in illegal activities? <laughs> Not at all. They're thriving because they still have three elements through which they earn their revenue. Around 60% of any museum or gallery's revenue is generated through fundraisers. This seems to be the norm nowadays, but this wasn't the case in the past, with people being asked to pay a ticket every time they wanted to visit the gallery. The second way galleries in the USA remain sustainable is through program services. What's that, you ask? While the public can visit the gallery and simply observe, they'll know nothing about the paintings themselves, unless they already have some prior knowledge. For the layman, you buy a ticket for such services, and a guide is present to explain each painting and the story behind it. This revenue channel is slow and often doesn't account for much. For example, in the Metropolitan Museum of Art, services brought in make up about 2% of the total revenue. Now, if you look at modern galleries, there's a category of revenue generation called earned income. This category involves everything from selling merchandise to licensing gift shops and educational programs. It has benefited many museums and galleries and is becoming increasingly popular. This new way of generating money is better for museums and is replacing the old ways of generating money. Galleries worldwide now also rely on earned income by selling special merchandise to the public because it provides them with a tangible connection to the gallery's art pieces. So nowadays, the type of merchandise sold at these galleries is hugely varied to appeal to visitors of all sorts. It may include books, prints, replicas, and memorable souvenirs for the masses to buy and keep. Think about it. Don't you want to think about the amazing places you visited? Sometimes pictures aren't enough, and you need an actual connection to the places you journeyed to. Also, besides selling merchandise, galleries nowadays have also found a way to capitalize on their intellectual property as a part of earned income. Galleries can easily do it since they just need to liaise with third-party manufacturers and retailers for branding and licensing purposes. In this way, they can earn a lot of capital by selling branded products that feature images, logos, or even designs associated with their collections. Similarly, many galleries earn by licensing agreements covering home decorations, stationery, apparel, and more. 
A perfect example is the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which has partnered with brands like An Gish and Scalamandre, both known for their exquisite bedding and fabric designs. Even though these revenue streams have provided art galleries with a steady income that ensures greater financial independence, they have also raised questions about the delicate balance between commercialism and cultural preservation.